God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Our God will be made manifest. He will not come in silence. Alleluia. The God of gods, the Lord, has spoken and summoned the earth from the rising of the sun to its setting. Out of Zion's perfect beauty he shines. Our God comes. He keeps silence no longer. Before him fire devours. Around him tempest rages. He calls on the heavens and the earth to witness his judgment of his people. Summon before me my people, who made covenant with me by sacrifice. The heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our God will be made manifest. He, he will, will not, not come in silence. silence. Alleluia. Alleluia. Offer to God the sacrifice of praise. Alleluia. Listen, my people, I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you. For I am God, your God. I accuse you, lay the charge before you. I find no fault with your sacrifices. Your offerings are always before me. I do not ask more bullocks from your farms nor goats from among your herds. For I own all the beasts of the forest, beasts in their thousands on my hills. I know all the birds in the sky. All that moves in the field belongs to me. Were I hungry, I would not tell you, for I own the world and all it holds. Do you think I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Pay your sacrifice of thanksgiving to God, and render him your votive offerings. Call on me in the day of distress. I will free you, and you shall honor me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Offer to God the, the sacrifice, sacrifice of praise. Alleluia. Alleluia. I want a loving heart more than sacrifice, knowledge of my ways more than holocausts. Alleluia. But God says to the wicked, But how can you recite my commandments and take my covenant on your lips, you who despise my law and throw my words to the winds? You who see a thief and go with him, who throw in your lot with adulterers, who unbridle your mouth for evil, and whose tongue is plotting crime. You who sit and malign your brother, and slander your own mother's son. You do this, and should I keep silence? Do you think that I am like you? Mark this, you who never think of God, lest I seize you and you cannot escape. A sacrifice of thanksgiving honors me and I will show God's salvation to the upright. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I want a loving heart more than sacrifice, knowledge, knowledge of, of my, my ways more, more than, than holocausts. holocausts. Alleluia. My heart and my flesh, alleluia. Rejoice in the living God, alleluia. From the book of Revelation, I, John, saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. They held in check the earth's four winds, so that no wind blew on land or sea or through any tree. I saw another angel come up from the east, holding the seal of the living God. He cried out at the top of his voice, to the four angels who were given power to ravage the land and the sea. 
Do no harm to the land or the sea or the trees until we imprint this seal on the foreheads of the servants of our God. I heard the number of those who were so marked, 144,000 from every tribe of Israel, 12,000 from the tribe of Judah, 12,000 from the tribe of Reuben, 12,000 from the tribe of Gad, 12,000 from the tribe of Asher, 12,000 from the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 from the tribe of Manasseh, 12,000 from the tribe of Simeon, 12,000 from the tribe of Levi, 12,000 from the tribe of Issachar, 12,000 from the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 from the tribe of Joseph, and 12,000 from the tribe of Benjamin. After this, I saw before me a huge crowd which no one could count, from every nation and race, people and tongue. They stood before the throne and the Lamb, dressed in long white robes and holding palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, Salvation is from our God, who is seated on the throne, and from the Lamb. All the angels who were standing around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures fell down before the throne to worship God. They said, Amen, praise and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving and honor, power and might to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders asked me, Who are these people all dressed in white? And where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you should know better than I. He then told me, These are the ones who have survived the great period of trial. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. It was this that brought them before God's throne. Day and night they minister to him in his temple. He who sits on the throne will give them shelter. Never again shall they know hunger or thirst, nor shall the sun or its heat beat down on them, for the Lamb on the throne will shepherd them. He will lead them to springs of life-giving water, and God will wipe every tear from their eyes. Who are these people clothed in white robes? Who are they, and where have they come from? I said to him, These are the people who have undergone the great persecution. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Alleluia. I saw beneath the altar the spirits of those who had been slain because of their witness to the word of God. These are the people who have undergone the great persecution. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Alleluia. From a Discourse by St. Athanasius. Bishop, the Word of God, incorporeal, incorruptible and immaterial, entered our world. Yet it was not as if he had been remote from it up to that time, for there is no part of the world that was ever without his presence. Together with his Father, he continually filled all things and places. Out of his loving kindness for us, he came to us, and we see this in the way he revealed himself openly to us, taking pity on mankind's weakness and moved by our corruption. He could not stand aside and see death have the mastery over us. He did not want creation to perish and his father's work in fashioning man to be in vain. He therefore took to himself a body, no different from our own, for he did not wish simply to be in a body or only to be seen. If he had wanted simply to be seen, he could indeed have taken another and nobler body. Instead, he took our body in its reality. Within the Virgin, he built himself a temple, that is, a body. 
he made it his own instrument in which to dwell and to reveal himself. In this way, he received from mankind a body like our own. And since all were subject to the corruption of death, he delivered this body over to death for all and with supreme love offered it to the Father. He did so to destroy the law of corruption passed against all men, since all died in him. The law, which had spent its force on the body of the Lord, could no longer have any power over his fellow men. Moreover, This was the way in which the word was to restore mankind to immortality after it had fallen into corruption and summon it back from death to life. He utterly destroyed the power death had against mankind as fire consumes chaff by means of the body he had taken and the grace of the resurrection. This is the reason why the Word assumed a body that could die, so that this body, sharing in the Word, who is above all, might satisfy death's requirement in place of all. Because of the Word dwelling in that body, it would remain incorruptible, and all would be freed forever from corruption by the grace of the resurrection. In death, the Word made a spotless sacrifice and oblation of the body he had taken. By dying for others, he immediately banished death for all mankind. In this way, the Word of God, who is above all, dedicated and offered his temple, the instrument that was his body for us all, as he said, and so paid by his own death the debt that was owed. The immortal Son of God, united with all men by the likeness of nature, thus fulfilled all justice in restoring mankind to immortality by the promise the resurrection. The corruption of death no longer holds any power over mankind, thanks to the Word, who has come to dwell among them through his one body. You will be my spokesman. I will make you a solid wall of brass to these people. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail, for I am with you. Alleluia. False teachers will arise. They will secretly bring in destructive heresies and deny the master who saved them. They will fight against you, but they shall not prevail, for I am with you. Alleluia. Let us pray. Father, you raised up St. Athanasius to be an outstanding defender of the truth of Christ's divinity. By his teaching and protection, may we grow in your knowledge and love. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us praise the Lord. And give him thanks.